KPMG is making a multi-billion dollar investment in Microsoft Cloud and AI services. The commitment of at least $2 billion over the next five years is going to reshape professional services for KPMG and Microsoft in a number of areas. Here to talk a little bit more about it, what it's going to do for the business, we want to bring in Paul Knopf, KPMG U.S. Chair and CEO. Paul, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for coming yeah, uh, to, in studio here. Shana, great to be here. Well, congratulations on this investment. Certainly yes. sounds like it's a massive a step forward here for KPMG. When you're talking a multi-billion dollar investment, mm -hmm. why is AI, why was this investment right for your company? Well, truly generative AI is an emerging technology. If you think about late last year, it first came on the scene and we needed a way to accelerate the development of that technology to bring it to our clients more quickly in the future. We saw that partnership with Microsoft is a perfect way. We've been in partnership with Microsoft since 2000, but this is an enhanced partnership. We will invest $2 billion over five years on solutions for our clients, but also to supercharge the experience of our employees that we have today because they're going to be able to do things more creatively with these tools. So we're really excited about that. We think it will generate $12 billion of additional revenue over the, the next few years. That revenue will come from sources like cybersecurity solutions, from um, the migration to the cloud and inclusion or integration of generative AI into these cloud services, as well as innovative new applications that uh, are not here yet, but we're currently working on. Yeah, that $2 billion or uh, $12 billion, I should say, value you pointed to, Paul, certainly significant. Um, can you can you be a little more specific on, on, on where you see the growth happening? H how do you see this technology being deployed? Sure, Kiko. I, we absolutely see it being deployed in almost every part of an organization, regardless of sector. So, for example, you can take this technology and you can embed it in sales and marketing. You can embed it in engineering, production, and finance, and you can make those operations more efficient and effective through the integration of this technology. It's also true to say that you can embed it in processes like, like tax, and we have KPMG Digital Gateway today where we are working on upskilling that tool with generative AI. So there's almost no part of the organization that this would not touch, and it's really exciting for that reason. And how are you communicating this to your employees? Because I think a lot of workers out there are a little bit nervous just about what AI yeah. is going to mean for their job. So I guess a two-part question here, how does it affect their day-to-day -day responsibilities? And do you see this affecting your headcount at all? Sure, well, if I look at the arc of, of recent history, the last 40 years, let's say, since I've been at KPMG, every major technology disruption that I have witnessed was not accompanied by significant loss of, of headcount. Mm -hmm. Uh, because as we generate new economic activity and new ideas, we tend to need more people. And we see generative AI is the same. So what we're looking at is we need people to ensure it's safe, secure, and reliable. We need people to interpret the results of the generative AI because it's neural networks and large language models that's giving us this, and they're, they're not perfect either. And we're going to need people that are data scientists to help us gather the right kinds of data and interpret that data. And then, of course, we're going to need people to help us develop these solutions. So we believe that generative AI and the investments we're making, the investments we're making uh, with Microsoft are going to allow us to actually, over a period of time, increase headcount. But it will Paul, definitely... when you think about... Yeah, I'm sorry, Kiko. I was just going to say that it will definitely cause uh, movement of certain activities, such as more routine activities from people to technology, but that will allow us to upskill those people and have them do more value-added things. Yeah, disruption, but not necessarily job loss, right. it sounds like Absolutely. what you're pointing to. Uh, you touched on the security part of it a bit, and, and I wonder if you can elaborate on that, how you're thinking about the elements of security, credibility, what are the safeguards you're considering given that this technology is still in the very early phases? Yes, yeah, so we, we absolutely need to develop these tools and technologies in safe, secure environments. So for instance, when we use a chat GPT type tool at KPMG, we're doing it on our secure platform with the enterprise security that Microsoft provides, and which is one other reason we really want to be in this partnership because of their great technology. And so as we help clients develop these solutions, we're going to be looking at the governance around this technology as well as the security that's built 
are architected around the technology, that's going to be a very important part of the development of this technology as we move forward into the future, ensuring that it's used in safe, secure environments and that it produces reliable, accurate information for companies to use. Paul, in this type of uncertain environment, we got the inflation print out this morning showing that inflationary pressures are easing, but it's largely yeah. expected that the Fed's going to uh, raise rates again later this month. Too early to tell what's going to happen later this year. How are you thinking about this as a CEO and evaluating investments and opportunities like this today, trying to figure out what makes sense and what doesn't in this environment? Yeah, so as we look at this environment, we think you have to invest for the future. And we're going to invest in this arrangement with Microsoft, and we're going to invest in other generative AI and cloud-based technologies. So there is no doubt that at the current time, in, in, in the last few months, there's been more uncertainty. Some of that's caused not just by interest rate increases, but by tightening credit conditions that are providing a little less clarity about spending by companies and by consumers to some degree. And so you have to take that into account. But as I look at the longer term, so say beyond the next three to nine months, the next three to five years, I'm really optimistic for a number of reasons. The type of technology we're talking about today and the spending on that technology, the Inflation Reduction Act and all the spending that's going to be happening around transition to cleaner sources of energy, the fact that there still is some structural imbalances, uh, imbalances in the labor market that are going to cause fairly tight conditions in the credit mar in the labor market. And then, very importantly, that trend of reshoring more because of supply chain risk, we expect that's going to continue to, and that that will also provide a pillar of strength for the U.S. economy. So we think it's a very resilient, strong economy, but the next three to six to nine months, there may be a little less clarity. All right, well, Paul, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for coming in here in studio. Paul Knopp, KPMG U.S. Chair and CEO. Thank you so much.